Should you major in computer science? Well, if you want to look like this, then yes. What is up guys, Mikey here. This is the first video in a series where I'm basically gonna go over should you major in a particular subject? So what does that mean? Basically, I'm gonna go over some classes that you would take, some topics you would cover, how that new grad salary is looking. I'll also, of all the classes I talk about, I'll give you the average grade received in those classes so you can sort of gauge how difficult you think it's gonna be. I'll have time links in the description below if you wanna kind of skip around, if you only wanna see one topic. Should you major in computer science? And by computer science, I mean pure computer science so not data science not software engineering not electrical engineering as close as you can get to just pure computer science so at my school it's called a computer science and engineering there's no just plain computer science they added the engineering at the end because it's an engineering degree and it just makes cs kids be able to flex a little bit more i have everything written down here about classes average grades stuff like that so we're just gonna get right into that and also obviously all the classes are gonna vary based on your university but you'll cover a lot of the same topics generally at four-year university you'll have similar requirements it should be noted my school is a trimester school not a semester school so we end up taking uh, a little bit more classes so hence some of the classes here, you'll be like, wow, how am I supposed to finish that? So some intro classes you're going to be taking are introduction to computer science and object oriented programming in Java. So basic introductory CS class, think AP computer science in high school, you cover Java. I took it. If you're familiar with Java from AP CS, you'll, you'll do well. So the average grade received, depending on the professor was B plus to A minus. So all the grades that I list here vary based on the professor and the time the class is offered, but I try to give sort of an average. You'll need to take a basic data structures and object oriented design class. So you can learn all the fun data structures. That way you can just go to relearn them when you want to study for coding interviews and leap code. Average grade received was around a B minus to a B. Then you'll need to take a discrete math class. What is discrete math? So you learn things like set relations functions logic induction and recursion average grade received in that was sort of like a b minus type then you'll be needing three calculus classes so in my at my university ucsd it's a sequence of three calculus classes so in the first sequence class the average grade received was a b second sequence sequence class the average grade was a c plus slash b minus and then the third sequence class the last of the bunch the average grade received was a B. So obviously the calculus classes have had lower averages compared to some of the intro CS classes. Then you'll be needing a linear algebra class. Now, although linear algebra sounds easy, it's mostly like matrix manipulation, stuff like that it becomes really important in later classes. Computer graphics, it becomes really important. Uh, linear programming, and even into some mathematical softwares. Then you'll typically need some sort of like general science class. For example, at my school, you need two general science courses. So that can be a physics class, chemistry, biology, things like that. Then you'll need a statistics class. So you can calculate how fair that new grad offer from Google is. Average grade received in that was a B minus to a B plus. Now, so for upper division classes or your big boy classes, they're gonna be a little bit more specialized. The class, class size are gonna be smaller. So first you're gonna be need to, needing to take advanced data structures. So that's more prep for leap code, basically. Average grade received was a B. Then you'll need to take a algorithms class. So the class that we take is called design and analysis of algorithms. There's very little coding, mostly just writing and algorithms and proofs, things like that. Thinking when you can use a certain algorithm, what algorithms do what, when to use them, things like that. Average grade received in that class was a B minus to a B. Then you'll need to take some sort of theory of computability class. I actually really like this class. You learn a lot of cool stuff like Turing machines and undecidability. It's very, very theoretical, but very, very cool stuff. Average grade received in that was a B minus. And then you'll need to take a software engineering class. It's where things get spicy, lads. Software engineering. You basically learn software development process, agile methods, things like that. I feel like I'm saying things like that a lot. Really useful if you have a lot of internships because then you're already familiar with agile. Average grade received in software engineering was a B plus. And if you actually notice, the average grade received typically increase as the, your as you take more in-depth classes. And I was reading an article where they said that your GPA tends to just naturally increase as you progress through university. So if you're going to university and maybe you got a bad GPA your first quarter, don't worry, GPAs typically increase as you continue at the school. Then you'll be needing a components and design techniques for digital systems. And that basically means you're designing Boolean logic, finite state machines, 
average grade to see was a B. Then you'll need a introduction to computer architecture. So processor design, systems design, all that sort of goodness. Average grade received in that was a B plus. Then you have a little bit of options here. So you need to take sort of a networking class. So at my school, you get a choice of three. So you can take principles of computer operating systems. That goes over operating system design, kernel design, memory management. Uh, average grade received in that class was a B minus. You get the choice of you could have taken the principles of computer operating systems, or you can take computer networks. Average grade received in was a B minus, or network systems or network services. Average grade received was a B. Then you'll need to take a programming languages slash databases class. So you, again, you get another choice. So you can either take principles and paradigms where you compare various programming languages, you learn a very broad sense of a lot of different like non common programming languages and the average grade received in that class is a B plus, or you can take a database system principles class, where you learn things like databases, obviously, and query languages, and the average grade received in that was a B minus. So you'll need an introduction to cryptography, basically. So you can either take introduction to modern cryptography, or you can take introduction to computer security. You basically cover very similar things like threat analysis, cryptography, basic computer security. So if you're interested in computer security, probably take one of those elect as an elective as well. An average grade received in both of those classes was a B, an absolute B, my friends. Dun, 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 dun. You'll need one class in c either computer learning, vision, or graphics. So this is where you get to st like very, very new stuff. So you can either take, as an example, at my school, Introduction to artificial intelligence, introduction to machine learning, introduction to computer vision, web mining, or computer graphics. So you'll need to take one of that list I just said. So that's done with all the basic requirements, basically. The basic, basically, requirements. So you'll need seven electives. So electives are really when you can sort of specialize in something that interests you. So maybe you're really into cognitive science and artificial intelligence. So you can take a lot of, you know, maybe cognitive science classes or data science classes or more artificial intelligence classes, as long as they are pertaining to computer science in general, or maybe you're really into data science and you want to even take some more math classes, some analytical classes, some data science classes, you get the option of doing that. So with electives, you can sort of choose any route that you want to do. And often sometimes if, if you don't think the class will count, you can petition for that class to count to your major department. So for example, when I studied abroad, uh, I wanted to take extreme computing, which dealt with a lot of distributed computing, and that wasn't on my electives. It, there wasn't like an elective spot that that could fill. So I went to my major department, and I basically petitioned saying, this class, you know, it's very computer science oriented, uh, and I think it should count as one of my electives. And they gave me the approval, so it counted for one of my electives. In terms of entry level salaries, what, what are we sort of going to be looking at? The average when I looked up just, you know, average of a computer science major is $66,005 right out of college. Now, obviously that's gonna based on your, very based on your source, and this was from 2018. So, you know, going with inflation in 2020, it's gonna be a little bit higher. Obviously this is greatly gonna vary based on the company. So for example, if we look at Google, new grad salary is between 100K and 130K right out of college. For a software engineer, and then at Amazon, we look at a similar position, right? New grad software engineer average is about 110K base. Salary. So obviously these are really prestigious and competitive companies. So they're obviously going to have the giant new grad offers. But when I, I remember specifically when I was a freshman and I read that, like, I was seeing like how, how low the, you know, the new grad salary is because you hear about how competitive computer science is and how you know you're basically guaranteed a six-figure salary right out of college and then you read like oh the average is 66 thousand you're like hmm. if you have a lot of student loans like myself it could be particularly stressful because you'll be like damn if i'm only going to get 66 thousand or maybe 70 thousand you're you know beating the average you're like how am i ever going to pay back my student loans, you know, depending if you go to like a private university, you can have like hundreds of thousands of dollars in student loans. But then you if, if you go for sort of these very prestigious companies, you'll get those very, very high starting salaries as well as generally they'll give you some sort of equity options. So whether that's they'll give you some amount of stock over a vesting period or they'll give you, you know, a signing bonus relocation package. Sometimes they'll give you all all four of those things. One last thing about the new grad salary is that it was actually the second highest out of all the after all the like sort of majors listed. So the the top average earning was just pure engineering. So 
if your computer science is split with engineering, like the one at my school is, then you can, you know, boost it a little bit higher. So amongst all fields, computer science had amongst the top average earning salary right out of college, if that's any consolation. Just to give a little bit more personal touch, you know, a little bit of a personal touch on whether it's worth majoring in computer science. So just to give my opinion, so my major actually isn't computer science and engineering, it is math and computer science. So should you, from just someone who's dealt a lot with computer science, although I haven't taken every class I listed out, I did, I've taken a lot of them and I've taken a lot of math classes. So for my experience in computer science, should you major in it? I find it extremely rewarding, but it's extremely, extremely hard. It doesn't come naturally to everyone and it didn't really come naturally to me. I had to study a lot. It honestly changes the way you think about a lot of things. So it's it's something hard to get used to and it's extremely frustrating. Like I've spent hours and hours and hours doing programming assignments. For example, like I remember one one class I spent like at least 11 hours at a single time in the computer lab finishing a coding assignment. Now, that was partially in my fault because I didn't start early enough, so I had to do a lot of work at once, but it's you're gonna be doing a lot of things like that, and it kinda sucks when you have to spend so many hours while you're in college doing one assignment. You may miss some things, but it's also really, really rewarding. It's some of the most rewarding things I've ever done, and when I was when I think about it, I don't get that feeling of satisfaction really from any other subject. So say when I finish an essay, like I don't get that sense of rewarding, rewardment from it. Whereas computer science, when it passes those tests, when it does what it I'm when it's supposed to do, I get really really excited. So if you sort of feel that same way, maybe you haven't done any coding. I would suggest, you know, take the intro level courses. That way you can get a sort of a good sense on whether you're going to like it or not. Maybe you've already taken AP Computer Science and you know that's what, you just want some reassurance that computer science is the way to go. And I think it is. I never really thought about changing my major. The only major I would like maybe change to would be data science. Um, and that's like if I went all the way back in time and knew what I wanted to do, I'd maybe, I'd have to think about math and computer science first, just data science. Maybe I would get a double major, but that's the only thing that I would think about. Coming from someone who has studied computer science almost for four years, I'm a senior, um, so just speaking from personal experience. All right, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. Mikey is the name. Um, giving advice is the game, I guess, in bad British accents as well. Consider tuning in to one of my future videos. Comment down below what you thought of the video. Comment down below um, if you're thinking about majoring in computer science or what else you're thinking about majoring in or what your major actually is. Check out some of my past videos that pertain to computer science a lot. So maybe where does your computer science major rank? Or think about what tech skills pay the most. Maybe that'll help you for choosing a major. It's been an absolute pleasure, my friends. See you in another video. Bye-bye.